Maria Ileka has a theory. According to her, the misogynist's playbook has three rules. When you engage women, number one, you can body shame by calling her fat or ugly. Number two, you can call her stupid or unqualified. Or number three, you can slut shame. Well, Maria, you may be onto something, as I've been subjected to all three. Fat or ugly? Check. Stupid? Check. Slut shamed? Check. Too ambitious? Check. That's when they're not asking when or if my husband will impregnate me. That's when I'm not being told to shut up or to go back to the kitchen or reminded that I'm an empty-headed and a bad example to adolescent girls. When I'm not busy being a manipulative, deceitful gold digger, I'm busy running the country as I've bewitched my old sugar daddy husband who is too blind to see through my feminine charms. Please remember that the only time society is willing to disempower a man is when it's time to blame his wife or girlfriend. I mean, surely you can see that the president is a good man. The problem is, wait for it, the problem is his wife. The only reasonable explanation for poor government decisions is that they've been influenced by his corrupt, greedy, interfering, controlling, horrible wife. My poor husband. Wait, no, he's not a real husband, nor am I a real wife. Our marriage is apparently arranged. A loveless union bound together by political ambition and greed. A business transaction is what one former politician called my marriage. When my husband and I look happy, it's evidence that I'm a great actress. When I forget to wear my wedding ring, it's evidence that our marriage is on the rocks and a divorce must be imminent. What else do you expect from someone who's brainless and heartless? These gendered insults are not just hurled by men. A few women are happy to participate. After all, women can also be patriarchal. When there was a clear social media campaign of anonymous WhatsApp messages specifically targeting me in the most disgusting ways, I was told not to respond, to ignore them. And I did. That was a mistake. I was wrong. Audrey Lord was right. Your silence will not protect you. The insults just got worse, and the lies they were willing to tell became increasingly outrageous. There were no more boundaries. My parents, my children, my family, my friends, all my loved ones became targets. Sometimes they took situational truths and distorted them into lies. Often they just made stuff up. A whole thread would be written without a single truth in it. I assumed that because the lies were so ridiculous, nobody would believe them. Again, I was wrong. I realized the outrageous lies were part of the plan. The cruelty was intentional. It was strategic. These people didn't expect others to believe them. They just wanted people to doubt the truth. Some did start to doubt me. Some did begin to believe the lies. My silence did not protect me. That's why I love that the International Women's Day theme is to choose to challenge. It sounds so simple. Power doesn't concede without a demand and neither does patriarchy. It makes absolute sense to challenge any aspect of gender bias as change doesn't come without challenge. I choose to challenge. I am challenging gendered insults this Women's Day because they aim to humiliate and reduce women into the restrictive box of societal norms and expectations. My husband was called an oxymoron nincompoop while I was being called rude and arrogant. I don't know what the hell an oxymoron nincompoop is, but why can't I also be called a neutral insult like an oxymoron nincompoop? I also want to be a nincompoop. I don't want to be a gold digger, a slut, a bad mother, a Jezebel. I don't want to be asked when I'm having a baby to be told I'm too ambitious, that I'm too loud, that I should shut up. The foundation of gendered insults is to put women in their place. Stay in your lane, I was told. If they can't reduce your self-confidence by making you feel small, 
They'll try to reduce how people see you. I recently instituted a defamation lawsuit against this type of behavior, as I've decided that enough is enough. An interesting thing happens when you stand up for yourself, when you challenge. You'll be called a troublemaker, too aggressive, too unladylike. That's why many of us prefer not to challenge gender bias. That is why we ignore being called gold diggers, sluts, Delilahs. That's why you will ignore being told you're too fat, too thin, your clothes are too tight, and that you, you should not have an opinion on politics. That's why you'll find a female executive making tea for her male colleagues or taking the minutes because women make and take better minutes. And why we keep quiet when construction workers literally shout sexism from rooftops. It's fear. We don't have the energy to challenge. We don't know what comes with a challenge. There are no limits to the insults that are thrown at women. All I can say for those of you who've been subjected to gendered insults is that you're in good company. These insults aren't directed at individuals. They are directed at women in general. After all, even the first lady is a hoe. Even the first lady is a Delilah. She's too emotional. She has no brains. A gold digger. That's how you women are. That's not how I am. I will not be silenced anymore, especially not on Beyonce's internet. Today, I'm also grateful for the men and women who do challenge, who question, who reject gendered insults, the people who reach out and say, be strong, we know who you are. Those people give me hope. They remind me that not everybody believes the lies. Not everybody forwards the messages or spends their weekends gossiping, laughing, and enjoying the latest bout of personalized attacks. I appreciate you. It's also these type of people, many of whom I don't know, who remind me that if I allow myself to be silenced, bullied, and insulted, I may be signaling that this conduct is okay, that it's normal. After all, most women go through this, and you are not special. It's not okay. It's not normal. And you are special. Disrespecting women is an important enabler of gender-based violence as it reduces women to objects. The intent behind aggressive and gendered insults towards women, whether it's done consciously or not, is to label and shame us into conforming with normative expectations. When you don't conform, then you'll be beaten, humiliated, and lectured into conforming. We must all remember that gendered insults seek to enforce beauty norms and uphold social expectations. We must never forget that sexism aims to promote traditional beliefs about women's roles. When you don't act within that norm, you must be adequately shamed to remind you that you are not special and that you are falling short of patriarchal standards. Next time you see a tweet a Facebook or Instagram story, shaming a woman. Remember its intent. Gendered stereotypes are harmful and often result in the violation of women's rights and bodily integrity. The limiting ways women are described is meant to deny women their agency and keep us in our place. Today, I'd like to challenge you. Next time you see a woman going through crude forms of abuse, remember this. It's not what they think about that individual woman. It's what they think about women and their place in society. Challenge it. By standing up for one woman, you stand up for all women. After all, silence does not protect us. It protects perpetrators.